Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and our guest this week is Eliza Jane Schneider. We're going to talk all about dialects and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've got some tech. Oh boy, do we ever. We're going to talk about some stuff that is so mystical to so many people. We'll demystify tonight. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. We're ready on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Yes. Well, episode 165. All right. It just keeps adding up and adding up and adding up. Stacks and stacks. It is. It is. Well, tonight we got a great show. As we do every time you tune in to watch us. We uh, don't do no junk. No, absolutely. Fresh content every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eliza Jane Schneider will be joining us in just a minute. And uh, right. we've, you know, if you've got a question for her, if you have... You know, after we talk to her, you're going to go, I got questions. Yeah, I got I'm things sure. I got to ask. Yeah. Um, two segments. So you'll have a chance. You'll have a chance. So if you have a question, throw it in our chat room. Or if you're on Facebook, throw it on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. depending on where you're watching this live, because yep. you're the smart people watching it live, because you get to actually interact with our guest and with George and I. Absolutely. So if you ha also have a tech question about your home voiceover studio, that's also the place mm -hmm. to put it. So, indeed. without any further ado, let's introduce our guest tonight. Our guest, Eliza Jane Schneider, is an actress and a voice actor, but she primarily right now is concentrating on the area of dialects, and she's got some classes she's teaching, and she's the best at this. So let's introduce our friend, Eliza Jane Schneider. Everybody, welcome. Hey. Nice to see you. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Too. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm buzzing tonight. Oh, look at that on the on the monitor. You can see the little bit, little bit of flare effect. there. Yeah. Never wear those types of. All right, we'll change it up on next TV. Week. Yeah, go, go for the extra purple shirt you have. I will. Yeah. It goes without saying that this woman once kidnapped me in Portland, Oregon. I did. Yes, during the Portland Film Festival. Mm -hmm. She just grabbed me by the arm and dragged me off to her house. Mm -hmm. and that was that was fun. I said, "Look at my studio," and and you taught me to. Put my mic upside down. I've been doing it right side up for decades. I know. And now it sounds? Sounds great. Bad. Right side up is the wrong side up. I yeah. no longer have to do the Cindy Lauper pencil move on my lip. I know. Oh, for plosives? Or yeah. Or for plosives? Yeah, if, because if you, the air is going down. You right. use the mic right, you don't need a pop screen. It's as simple mm. as that. I keep telling you kids that, but... It's so matter. worth kidnapping you. <laughs> <laughs> that, anyway. was, that was when we met, actually, in Portland. Well, we had met the week before. At voiceover mastery. Oh right. And then and then you grabbed me and then you oh, yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. So let's let's talk a little bit about you and how you got to where you are and how you're doing what you're doing. Uh you're originally from, as I recall, from Rochester. 
Rochester, New York. All right. Yeah. We've both been able to lose our up, our way upstate Western New York accents. Well, you want a glass of water? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's water. Get it right. Mm. Well, that's Philadelphia. Oh, that's yeah. that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, but Western New York has its own sort of flat A sort of thing, which we'll get into. Which is fascinating about dialects yeah. and stuff. But uh, when did you come out here to California and to be an actress? Or did you start well, in New York? Well, when I was or... 18 to play younger, which ah. I geekily knew when I was 18 to play younger. I um, I came out to UCLA because I wanted to try my chops on the West Coast and see if I could get into TV land. And uh, I figured I'd end up in New York City eventually. So I just wanted to have that little buffer of college to ease into the fiercely competitive world i had decided upon yeah not a not an easy business to get into you, no. you, it's got to be in your it's got to be in your gallbladder yeah to yeah. want to be an actor yeah i have one of those um dr seuss my book about me remember the yellow book where you filled in all the little things and from age five you know there's like a zillion things you can be and i think i started circling all of them and then i realized the only way to do that was to be an actor Makes total sense. Yeah. So how long did you, uh, I mean, you're still voice acting and stuff, but how, what types of things did you do? Oh, gosh. When, like, when I first got to L.A.? Yeah. or Oh, well, I you did. Know, like, um, like two years ago. Yeah, two years ago <laughs> when I first got to L.A. and we still had black and white headshots. Um, I did Beekman's World. And the first thing I did was uh, the Amazing Live Sea Monkeys little known project with uh, Howie Mandel. Three life-size sea monkeys and myself. I was the token female in that show. Um, very few people know this about Howie Mandel. Um, he played a mad scientist. And uh, and I played this little Joan Jet wannabe. And uh, I brought all my musical instruments to the audition and stuff like that. And, and then I ended up auditioning into the replacement, Beekman's World. Same time slot saturday morning 10 a.m very right. often preempted by basketball the only live action <laughs> show to be seen in prisons across the nation and uh therefore i got a lot of very interesting fan mail at ucla yeah i can see they're lot. all sitting there and they're watching they're doing like right what what's this oh yeah they let them watch <laughs> cartoons yeah and then here comes beekman's world and you know there's this girl in spandex and petticoats in a science lab as you do um yeah so so that was that was my sort of first foray into the world of entertainment ah fun stuff yeah. when did you start doing voiceover uh 1997 my first job was johnny bravo i played penny i think her name was uh and uh yeah, well, you know, I I went across the country ten times in a converted ambulance, recording people's dialects on a Sony Dat Walkman. Yeah. Um. Right. Sort of at the end of Beekman's World, I had one month off because I'd taken the fall quarter of my senior year at UCLA off to finish filming, and so we had this hiatus of. Uh, uh, it was the first free month of my life, and I just bought an ambulance because it had AC outlets in it, and I could plug in my recording awesome. gear and my walk, and I could cook. Van life. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. Van life. Was this part of, part of your program or part of your degree that you had a, a project you were working on? Or yeah, just... actually, it was um, my senior colloquium thesis project. I had transferred from the uh, theater department to the world arts and cultures department because I wanted to know what people really were like, mm -hmm. you know, who weren't me. <laughs> of which there are many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so I uh, yeah it was uh, I did American dialects. I actually asked my professor if I could do that, and he said we study third world countries here in world arts and cultures like China and Africa. Huh. And I was like, Africa's not a country. <laughs> um, the man had a PhD, um, so well I just yeah. felt like. I an idiot trying to go out and become the expert on Ghanaian drumming or whatever it was we were culturally appropriating at that moment right. and without knowing anything about my own culture or country and having been told that there was no such thing as an American culture. I just kind of wanted to go out and find out if that was true. Um, start here and then and then subsequently I, I just kept going. I went to I went across the country 10 times and then I went to every English speaking country in the world where English is the first language recording people's dialects and accents. Um, and I just did Singapore, which was the last one, um, except the Falkland Islands. So if I ever get asked to coach a project 
with a Falkland Islands dialect, I'll have to go there. But um, but for the most part, I've I've gone to people's hometowns and recorded these phonemes in their pure, unadulterated form. Because um, hmm. you know, the minute you step foot outside your hometown, you start to speak differently if you pick things up. That's how accents oh, happen. It happens oh. to me all the time. Yeah. yeah. Constantly <laughs> shifting. So, so when you look on something like Idea and you listen to somebody who was recorded at the University of Kansas after having been there for three or four years, you're not necessarily getting what you need. Yeah. Um, so mm. I was trying to create this resource for actors, and I have it now. It's called the Dialect Database. It's a huge mess, and if any of you would like to help us with it, uh, you can take <laughs> some of my classes for free in exchange for being my slave. Oh. Yes, and who's, archiving who's my research. Yeah. Who's administering this database? Uh, my, my, one of my students, uh, Goldie. She is in Seattle, and she's just starting out in voiceover, and she's fantastic, and she's helping me. She's got about 45 volunteers who are all going through about 7,000 interviews right now, archiving them and cataloging them and making them accessible to actors. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And writers. Wow. And yeah. Whoever else cares. That's, yeah. that's an amazing resource. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. no, huge. I'm serious. I will trade uh, class tuition for people to help me with the data- database. Because I don't have minions, you know? Yeah. The, that other guy with the, the dialect archive in the <laughs> Kansas or whatever, he's got like, you know, like students. Oh, he's got um, minions. He's it's got a people. Thing? Yeah, oh, he's got yeah. people to help him. Ah. But, um, You're doing it privately. Yes. <laughs> so you'll own it and not some university and That's somewhere. true. That is true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So what what is uh, what is it about dialects? Do you, did you do much studying as to why things would develop differently? Why is it that people in North Dakota sound like people in in Winnipeg wow. and why do people in you know in in Arkansas not sound quite the same as the people in Kentucky? Or the same people in Wales. Well, okay, so 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 the first <laughs> myth there is that dialects are defined by political boundaries. Interesting. So there's not an Arkansas dialect versus a Mississippi dialect, but there's definitely a mountain dialect versus a tidewater dialect. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all has to do with immigration patterns. For example, the sort of two classes of Southern that we think of when we think of the American Southern dialect. You've got your plantation tidewater Southern that goes all around the Mississippi Delta and all around, you know, um, North Carolina. And, and of course, they're, um, they're about... 17 distinct dialects in North Carolina, but like that, yeah. like, including the Outer Banks, where they right. tend to sound like Harry Potter or Hagrid, <laughs> Hagrid, right. the, the high titers. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so there's, there's the Plantation Southern, which is non rhotic R dropping, and they say, y'all are invited to dinner. And then there's oh, the, yeah. the Mountain Southern, which you'll find in, you know, the, um, the Ozarks and right. all through, you know, Arkansas and, and parts of, Mississippi and um, and it's not necessarily the mountains, but it has to do with the immigration of the Irish and the Scottish that came up in there, and they have those hard R's like y'all are invited to dinner. Oh, you know, yeah, that's the hard R. So, that's so it's really topographical more than it is political boundaries that define yeah. accents, and and that can kind of give you a sense of a regional accent. I'm from Pennsylvania. There's a uh, at least 17 dialects, probably, you know, in the eastern part of the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. is crazy. Well, and of course, they've got the, the Amish and the, and they've oh, got yeah. the, That's the a Mennonites and the yeah. different. I, I recorded a bunch of them. I was fascinated I to a, find I, that they had cell phones. I had a girlfriend that lived in a town that is written on paper, Shenandoah. Oh, if mm-hmm. you go into this town and pronounce it Shenandoah, yeah, they're going to follow you around and see you wait till you leave. Yeah. It's Shendo. Shendo. That's it. Right. Shendo. Yeah, and you don't want to call Versailles Versailles in America. Right. <laughs> no. I've seen it done. Uh, yeah. But screwing up place names is one of the things that actors are really good at. And so and that's one of the things as a dialect coach I get to do. Is, you ever seen one of those cool. goofy surveys that's probably been viral on Facebook where it it's, it gives you like 20 questions and it says, how do you say yeah. this word? Accent tags. Yeah. yeah and then at the end out. they say, you live. And it works. Yeah. I mean, I went through it, and I haven't lived in Philadelphia in a long time. But it asked me all these questions, and at the yeah. end it said, you're from Philadelphia. Oh, that's like, cool. Oh, no, oh, I've actually it. not seen that. Yeah, I've seen neat. the accent tags that people tag themselves and say this is like, how, how do you say cherry, the word oh, cherry? And it has all Do these, you know what one of them's cherry. It's, it was a couple of years ago. You have to give I'll, me the I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. It was really, so we really fascinating. Swag F, so, okay. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> so... Now you're teaching this. I you, am. you you have this massive database yes. and and all of this built up knowledge mm-hmm. and actual examples. Yes, I do. How are you using this to teach people this stuff? I mean, it how do you teach a dialect? 
Oh, gosh. Well, I teach in three ways. It kind of depends on the proclivities of my student. Okay. Um, you individualized, have... individualized oh, teaching. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if I have a, a celebrity, say, that has zero time and is running to the set, mm -hmm. I listen to them first, see what they're doing wrong, and sometimes we'll just tweak a few things, you know. Um, or we'll make a different choice about their character's backstory on the fly. Right. To, in keeping with what they're actually doing you know right. that's that's something you do when you have zero time um but uh auditory visual and kinesthetic is the three-pronged approach and we all use all of these things when we're learning but Absolutely. some of us are more auditorily inclined some of us are more kinesthetic we we have to have our costume on to get into character you yeah, know it's, it's sensor it's physical sensory yes yes yes, mm -hmm. yes and and then some of us are more a visual we take notes we're note takers so for those people, the International Phonetic Alphabet or, or re-spelling really helps. For example, um, when I'm teaching a Scottish dialect, I will say, uh, say the word settled. Say the mm -hmm. word settled. Settled. Now replace that S with a W. Sweatled. No, replace the oh. S with a W. Weddled. What in the weddled are you talking about? Uh, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so it tricks people into doing something they didn't think they could previously do when you do uh -huh. some respelling with rhyming words like that. So that's mm -hmm. that's for my visual, visually oriented people. And in my on my um, dialectmasterclass.com dot com mm -hmm. in my websites that my students have access to, there you can pretty much choose whichever way works best for you. Mm -hmm. Now this is important for voice actors because they're always asking for dialects, but most of the time they say it's got to be dead on. You've yeah. got to be able to relate. It's got, you know, somebody in the Tidewater because mm -hmm. you're doing a you're doing a commercial for somebody in, you know, Virginia Beach. It, you can't you, you've got to be convincing of it. And yeah, I mean, that's true for commercials, that's true for video games. A lot of them take themselves very, very, very seriously and they want you to pass as a local, which is right. definitely possible right. if you study a native speaker. Right. Um, to me, studying these native speakers, studying two or three native speakers, finding the commonalities and creating this avatar of your own version of this dialect um, is like learning to play a concert or playing some music right so so i'm learning the dialect itself is a different instrument i'm reshaping the inside of my mouth my vocal posture is changing from flute to you know recorder right. mm. and then the character and their monologue is the song i'm singing within that instrument right so you can memorize as many songs as you want you could do a whole set list right you know if you have this kind of method down and you know kind of what you're doing God, and you can is, pass as a local. This is one on one, but maybe can you explain really the, what's the difference between dialect and accent? Well, okay, so the dictionary definition is different than the common usage definition. So right. the dictionary dictionary definition, I'm slightly different, um, is uh, a dialect is defined by a variation in pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. Okay, whereas vocabulary an accent is, right. is simply mm -hmm. a, a variance in pronunciation. Got it. Okay. However, in common usage, it's usually, oh, he's got a foreign accent or he's got a, a different regional, uh, you know, English dialect, okay. right? So they'll say that, you know, somebody from Manchester has a Manchester dialect yeah. versus somebody who came from France and is speaking English has a French accent. <laughs> That's usually how it's okay. used. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. It, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you went traveling across. I'm I'm imagining that you probably had some interesting adventures Dude. collecting some of these. What were some of the more interesting ones that happened to you? And, oh gosh! And what did you learn Is from this, it from a dialect? What's perspective? the rating on this program? Uh, it's, it's, uh, Ella right. has her earbuds in watching yeah, a she, sitcom she's, rating. Yeah. yeah. I can say In other words, you can say whatever, whatever you though. want. Oh, you fascinating. Want. Um. Well, the one time I turned on my lights and sirens, that was fun. Um, <laughs> I you were was in an in, ambulance. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It was in North Carolina and um, I heard these girls. So apparently in, I think it was Richmond. It's, it was a long time ago, but um, the hangout in the region where I was, was the Burger King. All the girls had Keds, those little white shoes. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and all the boys had trucks that were custom painted that had at least nine woofers lining the, mm -hmm. um, the back. And um, I heard this girl talking at the top of a hill looking down on a parking lot going oh shit 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 and i was like 
oh, God, I have to record her. <laughs> and I said, step into my ambulance and let me record you. I have a box of wine. And she and her sister got into my ambulance on the condition that I turned the lights and sirens on and went went down. And I said, I'll go chase your boyfriend down. We see him down there. We'll go, we'll go get him. And he either wet his pants or spilled his beer because when we finally pulled him over in this Kmart parking lot moistened. or whatever, yes. He was, yes, in this region, yes, yes, he was. <laughs> I mean, he was very nervous about having been pulled over oh, by an ambulance. Oh, that's so funny. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm being chased by an ant. Wait a second. An yeah, ambulance yeah. full of police? With my yeah, girlfriend in it yeah. and her sister. And oh, so ultimately, I mean, I ended up with one of my favorite interviews. These girls were just one-upping each other right and left. And they, one of my favorite quotes from that session was, um, When I was little, she used to try and kill me by sticking baby powder up my nose. I did not. I like the puff balls that the powder made. It's so awesome. It's such a great yeah. interview. If you're just joining us and wondering uh. what on earth is going on, we're, <laughs> we're talking with Eliza J. Schneider, who is a dialect coach uh, for actors and voice actors and for anyone else, I take it, who really needs to sound like there's somebody else in another place. If you've got a question for it, throw it in our chat room, our interactive chat room on our webpage, or uh, on if you're in Facebook, uh, you can throw it in there too, and we will mm -hmm. ask that question of her when we get the opportunity to do that in our next segment. So uh, how, I mean, you were, you were explaining how you teach. Mm. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, your classes, and mm. it, they must be fascinating. Well, we have a lot of fun, definitely. I'm sure you do. And it attracts a fascinating type of person. At my, my classes, I have to say, attract a really intelligent demographic. Everybody, is, they're, they're so smart and they're so talented and they're becoming so adept at just, you know, switching back and forth. And they're all pretty much training to do what I do, which is be a utility voice mm. and, and, you know, be super extra helpful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so, well, there's dialectmasterclass.com is where it all started. And I have this sort of European centric kind of um, massive material that for me was the most marketable when I started this four years ago. You know, you've got your various regional American dialects. And in that module, I also teach the auditory looping method, which has become the mainstay of, you know, voice matching dialects, accents, and even teaching lawyers how to use more powerful voices. I mean, I have hmm. this method that apparently transcends um, voice teachers all over are getting really excited about it. I was asked last week to go to Orlando to um, present these methods to all these voice and speech teachers at a big conference as a master presenter. I'm so swanky. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's really cool. Basically what I do, uh, I'll spill the, the beans. Okay. Spill the beans. Well, you can, you can give a lot of the, the what, just not a whole lot of the how. <laughs> I loop it for I take a, a, a pet, like a phone number size sound bite of a native speaker. Yeah, I loop yeah. it 14 times. I mute four, six, eight, and 10. So you end up with a chant rhythm kind of happening. I put it in your left ear. It goes into your right brain. You get this intuitive sense of what this person sounds like. Mm -hmm. And then you record yourself on the next track. You put your, your own voice in your right ear and you're analyzing it on the fly as you chant and you repeat what this person is saying and by the time my students are oh. done whether they be australian dialect coaches themselves who are trying to learn a nigerian accent or uh, you know some celebrity that's got to shoot a scene in five minutes and has to completely change the way they sound all of mm -hmm. a sudden because right. production never gave them time mm -hmm. you know um three minutes sometimes it takes to get 90 percent of the way there it eliminates 90% of my teaching time this method. So it's it's Whoa. fascinating and fun Whoa. and fun to watch. Everybody's ears pop when you play it back for them and they go, oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. And I just sit back and I don't have to teach. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, almost yeah. an app for that. <laughs> so, yeah. So dialectmasterclass.com. But this year, finally, coming up September 10th, same day my movie comes out. Which is? Or can you talk about yeah, it? Yeah, Curious George oh, 4. Oh. I can finally announce. Curious George 4, the royal monkey. Hey, I play awesome. Anna. I played a straight man to Curious George's foibles. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. So, yeah, it's actually the first time I'm ever using my own accent in a project, I'm pretty it's sure. just being you. <laughs> <Which> I know. <laughs> if only my daughter was paying attention. Uh. She was a huge, she was a, and probably still is, but she was a huge fan of the original you know, a few shows or a few movies that came out. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, my son and went to the screening with me at DreamWorks on Sunday. And How old is it's he? So, he's eight. Oh. And, and it's just so 
touching and charming. And what I love about Curious George is the space. They give each emotion a moment True. to land, and you get these beats that you just don't get yeah. in the fast-paced world of Ninjago and, yeah. you know, the Lego movies. And yeah. It's just everything else is so in your face really fast all the time. Yeah, yeah, Lots of yeah. sound effects. And yeah. Curious George gives you the time to just be a kid and be feel for the monkey. Mm -hmm. Get a feel for the monkey. And he just said, yeah. with your facial expressions. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really lovely. No, I really liked it. I mean, yeah. I liked it as an adult. I yeah. could see the what was so different about that film, yeah. the way it was produced. So they're yeah. continuing that same yeah. kind of pacing, that same kind of energy and mood yeah really movie. talented team keith the guy who uh edited south park when i was on it was the editor on this movie too so we so have they want the same reunion. demographic to keep coming but it's not like <laughs> i think of harry potter movies because ella is really you, right? ella's really <laughs> into harry potter right so the sixth as the movies go on they they are they expect the audience to be growing up oh with yeah the characters yeah so we just watched one of them it was freaking scary i know right right it was scary i was like and this is like this i thought this was a kid's movie but where but with that show it's a timeless show yeah, they're that's trying to, true. they want the same audience not the same audience to grow older with it but they want to keep bringing the same kind of kids and things yeah like that. yeah 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 well my son um i'm making him read the books before he watches the movie so mm -hmm. we're on number five right now and uh hopefully he'll be 12 before we actually watch it it's Brutal, man. It's yeah. pretty intense. It was intense. Four was intense. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so your class is starting the same day. Tell us Yes, about yes. That. September 10th, I am launching the Dialect Masterclass again. But anybody who signs up now in the next week or so um, for the Dialect Masterclass will get one of these new electives that I'm teaching for the first time. Um, you know, I've been researching dialects around the world and I've been performing dialects around the world for a long time. But now we're in this incredibly exciting time when casting directors are recognizing that hey if i've got a chinese character i really want to find a chinese person i mean it's actually if i've got a chinese character i want to find an asian person at least right, right? Mm -hmm. so so if you are asian or from the you have ancestry from the continent of asia my distinctions in asian dialects class elective <laughs> is something you can take in tandem with the master class and you'll learn korean north and south japanese You'll learn um, Cantonese versus Mandarin one week. You'll learn Singlish versus Singaporean and like the four different kinds of Singlish um, with Petrina Cow, who's a voice teacher from Singapore. So I'm bringing in my friends from these voice and speech teachers conferences wow. from all over oh, the world. Man. And it's interesting because I feel like there's one of me in every country. I keep finding these women who are like the voiceover person, utility person who also teaches, like right. the super geek. <laughs> I found my geeky people. <laughs> so you have and a whole worldwide network of these people. It's really cool, yeah. yeah. So I'm offering this for the first time starting t September 10th. You can sign up by going to dialectmasterclass.com and um, clicking on the free training in the upper left corner, and you'll get a 90-minute free training if it's for you. You buy it, and you won't see this on the page. This is this is news right now. Mm -hmm. Very exciting mm -hmm. that you get this elective as well. The place you'll find the electives, there's dialects for um, uh, black characters. There's dialects for basically your audition type. Yeah. Latinx characters. Mm -hmm. There's there's uh, Middle Eastern, you know, when they ask for that Middle Eastern Generic mishmash. Middle Eastern, yes. Right. So we've got survey courses basically going on in tandem with the master class. So you can really go deep and, and really authenticate your stuff. The way Steve Bloom said it is, I've been faking it up until this point. When I took your class, now I know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Oh. But um, but yeah, so, so you'll find that at characteractingacademy.com forward slash electives. And that's where you'll find the elective that you're going to get with your dialect master class. All right. We'll, so, we'll give those out again a little bit later, too. Yeah. Once again, our guest is Eliza Jane Schneider. We're talking about dialects and how she teaches them and how she can teach you and that sort of thing. Again, if you've got a question, now would be a really good time to ask it. And we got like some. A, and we got some. So we're going to take we a break. Got one. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to be right back with Eliza Jane and your questions right up there after these incredibly important messages. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. 
There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and I'm very excited, very happy to announce that as of today, VO2GoGo's sponsorship with uh, VoiceOver Body Shop is over. Long-standing relationship, bye-bye, VO2GoGo. And the reason I'm happy and excited about it is that we're about to embark on a brand new sponsorship arrangement with VoiceOver Body Shop with the new name of our website and our company. The name is now voheroes.com. And there's a big reason for that. I think that VoiceOver Body Shop and our company share a mission. And that mission is not just to teach you how to do voiceover really well, but to really help you become heroes to your clients. Your clients don't come to you just to do voiceover. Your clients come to you to help them, to save them, to help them sell products and services, to help them explain their company, to help them narrate their audiobook. There's a million reasons why they come to you, and it's all about making their lives spectacular. And that's what we're going to do at voheroes.com. The new website is up. I'd love to show it to you. voheroes.com front page is basically a very modern, clean look that tells you everything you need to succeed. It helps you meet our coaches, uh, what we do in three simple steps. We let you figure out if VO Heroes is right for you. We think it usually is if you're watching the show. Um, we have the same classes, but they've been heroically updated for voheroes.com. And again, the look and feel is fantastic. And the big thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to get off Facebook because people have been telling us we don't want to be on Facebook. So now ProConnect, which is our discussion group, is on voheroes.com. When you want to talk about things with your uh, your your fellow pros in the VO Heroes curriculum, uh, you'll be able to do it right on the site. Log in, get all of the stuff that you want, the workouts, the classes, the discussion, uh, the labs, the recordings, everything right there on one site. Clean, awesome, lovely, and I'm very excited about our future. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be launching officially with a great package, great price, lots of great bonuses, Stand by for that. You'll hear about it on VoiceOver Body Shop. In the meantime, stand by for more VOBS. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, from voheroes.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and we're talking with Eliza Jane Schneider, talking about dialects and stuff. But also, you were on South Park? Yeah. Tell us about that. Five years. Five years. Yeah. You must have played a lot of different characters on yeah, that. Yeah, I played most of the females on that show. Really? Yeah. That's quite a distinction, because yes. they don't like to use too many other voices other than their own, right? Yeah, it was pretty much me, Matt Trey, and uh, Isaac Hayes for a little while there. <laughs> and Mona Marshall. The Godfather of Soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. It was, it was awesome. It was crazy. <laughs> well, what, was, what was that like? I mean, I mean, they're nuts. 
Yeah. There's that show they did on Netflix, The Doc, Six Days to Air. Is that what it was called? I don't remember. There was a doc they did about the show, about how oh. they do it every oh, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I around. actually remember yeah. going to the Craft Emmys with Seth MacFarlane. He won an Emmy for the um, dog voice, a song that he sang. And I remember there was a little film strip about the way South Park creates the show. And uh, <laughs> we're getting interviewed, and they're like, yeah, we do all the voices. And I was like, what am I, Chuck Living? Yeah, what the heck? What? But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's how they kept so current. But interestingly, now with the streaming, it's not as, you know, it's not as pertinent to keep that current because people are always binge right. watching, you know right. what I mean? But right. like when Alien Gonzalez got, you know, dragged um, it, and they had it like the next day right. in animation, whereas Simpsons took like nine months, right. you know, yeah, so, no, so we would be amazing. we would be doing ADR at two o'clock yeah. in the morning the night before broadcast. Oh, wow. my God. That's yeah. incredible. It was insane. Yeah. And everybody's working around the clock. Um it was an intense working environment. Yeah. Uh, How many guys years? Those are awesome. Five doing? years. Five years. Five yeah. years. Then I asked for a union contract. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Once in a while, you have to speak up for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That will play on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. an annuity every you. year. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I anyway. lived in a van with my principals. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Me and my principals hang, hung out playing chess. Cool. For a while, <laughs> we had so a lot fun. of time on our hands. Well, um, yeah, no, it was awesome. I, I, I love those guys. I think they're hilarious. Yeah. Oh, they Book are. of Mormon's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brilliant, brilliant. Anyway, we're talking with Eliza Jane Schneider. We have a couple of questions from our vast worldwide audience. They're watching all over the place. They're having oh. lunch in Australia right now, but right? they're watching. So, what do we got, Mister Whitman? Yes. Huh? Yeah. First one in the queue here is from Fred North. Uh, I've never done any dialect, never thought I could. Uh, can an old dog learn new tricks, and where to start, if so? Well, sometimes. The answer is sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it is contingent upon whether or not you have an ear for it, sometimes. You know, it's, it's possible to teach someone kinesthetically, sort of like, you know, miracle worker style, yeah. you know, like creating the... <laughs> Yeah, if you create a different mouth position, you'll like I like I showed you with the respelling. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you can trick yourself into doing something you didn't imagine you could do. But you know, everybody's born with the same tools. You know, so it's just a matter of what your ear selects for in terms of what your brain decides is important. Um, when you're basically up to four months old, <laughs> this is why I was sitting there nursing my kid, watching Vietnamese television. <laughs> I <laughs> end at three o'clock in the morning, but hopefully someday, if he ever needs to know Vietnamese, he'll have the tools. Mm. Um, That's the fun of having an antenna as opposed to just cable, because you can like pick up all the Vietnamese stations, right? Especially here in LA, you can get all the ones out of Orange County. It's um, but cool. where you start, if you're curious, is the free training at dialectmasterclass.com in the top left corner. You click on free training, and it's it'll it'll give you some some tools, and you can try your right there. try your hand. At, uh, at, and then, of course, you can go to the dialect database, which is a huge mess right now, but you can certainly download a couple of native speaker samples and try the method, the looping method that I teach in that free training. And if you want to go deep, sign up. We're starting classes September 10th. Cool. And you do it online? Yeah, online. Oh. From the comfort of your own home studio. Oh, boy. <laughs> Another one. This is a, there's a two questions from Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And Ella, you're going to have to supply your own electricity. I don't know how you're going to do that, but you're going to have to figure it out. So good luck with you. He's talking um, to his daughter. Uh, what was the most challenging? This is from Jonathan Aurora. Or Aurora. Oh, that's a name that's misread Aurora. the first time by millions. Aurora. Sorry, Jonathan. Um, what was the most challenging accent or dialect for you to learn? Uh, what did you work uh, Welsh. on? Welsh. Welsh was hard for me. I just didn't have it in my ear. Um, and those the the lateral plosive that clond roost you know that double l they actually also have that in uh the clinket tribe in uh Ju near juno alaska mm -hmm. um but okay. it's it's a very rare thing to do with your mouth klingons yeah. do it klingons. it's a plosive like, that klingons, goes this not way klingons klingons clinkets and like klingons, klingons. <laughs> coincidence oh, well, like, yeah. i don't know like, yeah like like this <laughs> is a Klingon term of endearment and insult simultaneously. I love that about Klingon, <laughs> but we digress. So, uh, yes, that is Welsh. the answer to that. The second question, uh, what's your current recording setup for home and travel? Oh, God, you should see it. Are they different? I the actually, same? it's the same. And, and, you know, at first, you know, I had the $10,000 mic, not at first, but, you know, eventually I was like, 
I've got to get this all dialed in. But, you know, now I'm running around with an AT2020 with a rubber band holding it together because of the last time I dropped <laughs> I, it I've off of a balcony. This. It's, it's yes. over here. Yeah, I was just auditioning with it. I got I to gotta get a new mic. Um, but, yeah, just USB. I find that, you know, I was running around with, because um, I do quite a bit of traveling, recording mm -hmm. dialects. Um, I was running around with a cooler bag. You know, because it's padded right. with my M box and my laptop and my XLR cables and everything. And I just found that not having an interface was way, way easier for me. And, and I, you know, now people, especially celebrities, are recording on their phones. Yeah. And so they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're really cars, becoming used which to. Is really, actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Decent. Simplicity. I'm all about the simplicity. And, and I've stopped trying so hard to create a completely soundproof studio. I had, I had to wait out the, um, propane tanks in Topanga the other day and oh, really? the dogs barking and whatnot. But, um, but you know, you do what you need to do. Mm, yeah. Well, my work here is done then because you've been, <laughs> you've been listening to us and simplifying, which is what we, yeah. we try to tell people. Don't overthink this stuff. Yeah. You know, if you don't know, you don't know. And you don't know what you don't know. Well, I'm a gypsy, but I'm a hoarder and it's a talent to balance being a gypsy and a hoarder. Well, so what Los I Angeles. do yeah, is I, gypsy take, hoarders. I take the we books many. <laughs> that I've hoarded, I surround myself with books, you know, and mm. then the clothes that I've hoarded. And then there's my soundproof booth pretty much anywhere I go, including my van. I just recorded a bunch of stuff on the way down the coast from Portland. Yeah, um, that's just, actually a really good idea for a cheap makeshift booth. Books and that I've ne yeah. literally never thought of. Just making well, the uh, using books as bricks and just yeah. making a oh yeah <laughs> making a oh, yeah. wall around you. Yeah. Well, they're great for diffusion they're heavy. And stuff. Yeah, yeah they're heavy. Yeah, they're they heavy. don't let sound in. They they diffuse sound. It works pretty you well. You heard here first. It's just invented. By yeah, books and books. Jane Sherman. Unless of course right. they fall over, which then you got to start all yeah, over. You no, might need glue. Yeah. Clue, books and clothes. <laughs> uh, a bunch more, actually. Ron Garner says, how does a person start to help with oh, the database? Oh, well, you start by, let's see. Um, you can email us at assistant at dialectmasterclass.com and say, I want to help you with the database. Do they have and to sing it? No. Okay. Not through email. <laughs> sing. sing to me through your email. Um, yeah. Just email us, assistant at dialectmasterclass.com, and, uh, and we'll get you all sorted and hooked up. And um, we have a free webinar coming up. Or it's not free. Um, there's a promo code. You have to, uh, yeah, but if you, if you email that same uh, email address, we have a webinar on Wednesday with Jennifer Hale at 630, and it's called Beyond Money. Um, and it has to do with, you know, how do you navigate the world of acting and deal with your finances well, that's as good. a yeah. contractor. Um, with, yeah. And Jen Hale holds the Guinness World Record for the most prolific video game actress. Oh, um, really? Um, yeah, know. she's amazing. And uh, she's helped me with my financial decisions. My financial oh, decisions being yeah. an actor. You know, it's hard. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so we're having this webinar on Wednesday. And if you look that up, um, you can... Uh, I suppose I should have a link or something. That'd be on like August twenty eighth for the yeah. people who are time shifting this. Yeah, on yeah. Podcasts. August twenty eighth at six thirty. But yeah, anytime you can go to Dialect Masterclass, you click on the free training and it'll give you all kinds of options to get in with us and start working on the the database or your own work or or the Character Acting Academy. You can also, hmm. um, if you go to characteractingacademy dot com, you can click on Apply Now and you will get a fifteen minute audition with me. But please don't do that unless you're really an actor and you really want to audition for the Character Acting yeah. Academy. You're really serious about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's one from Noah DeBias. DeBiasi. Thank you very much. It's that Western New York name. No, heard Noah Noah DeBiasi Eliza. Um, ever run into an American accent that was so utterly unintelligible, <laughs> despite them actually speaking English? I don't know if it was Working Ten or Working Ham. I forget, but it's the southern coast of England. It was in America. Oh yeah, Gullah, Gullah, oh, yeah. The Gullah in in on on Helena Island. There was one. I was looking for pure Gullah as opposed to people who studied how to do Gullah and like perform in Gullah, but you know, code switch and okay, the rest I'm of the I'm the time. one here that doesn't know what you're talking about. It's Gullah an Island off of South Carolina. In well, North Carolina. And Helena Island is the island. It's one of the islands. And yeah. Beaufort versus Beaufort. I always forget which. Is which, but basically, there's there is a lingua there's a, a lingering lingua franca, which mm. is the English, um, s basically the English morphology with the Sierra Leone syntax. So that's where you get 
he gone, he be gone, and he been gone, being three different verb conjugations oh. with three different levels of meaning to them. Mm-hmm. But it's Gullah Geechee. It's, there, there's this uh, show called Gullah Gullah Island. Yeah, I think it was on PBS, oh. yeah. um, I met a oh. man when I was researching the Gullah dialect who wrote a Bible in the Gullah dialect. Wow. Yeah, there's Whoa. a Gullah Bible. It's yeah, it's sort of like the Br'er Rabbit Tales, if you okay. have no reference yeah. for it. It's yeah. an yeah. island essentially established by freed slaves at the end of the Civil War. Uh-huh. They, yeah. And they created their Yeah, and, and these are places language. where for 100 years or so there weren't very many white people at all, but people were sort of being forced out of their language and being forced to speak English. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyways, that, that one, when I met Butch at the steamer restaurant on Helena Island, um, and he hadn't been to school, and so he was still speaking Gullah. Um, and uh, he he would sing and speak and you know and I had to listen back several times to be able to really understand it. Um, but I was going to tell you about Workington or Workingham, and that was a place in England where the dialect was so thick I I really couldn't understand it at all. And parts of like under bridges amongst the um, the people who living houseless um, in Glasgow, very difficult for me to understand at first. But when you listen back several times, you can start to. I understand it. I, I find, like, if I'm listening to my gardener, Raul, mm-hmm. who's Salvadoran, mm-hmm. I, he's talking in, in the Spanglish that he is talking, and I'm like, what? I close my eyes and I tune into him, yeah. I hear exactly what he's saying. Yeah, you have to kind of reenact what it was like to be a baby before you knew everything, before you decided that you knew everything. And you have to be open to the meaning that's coming at you. There was a very short span of time there yeah. between the two. But... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love yeah, it. I mean, it's, how is how is that? That the go, Goa? Gullah. Gullah. Different from um, like a Cajun dialect. C- Cajun? Cajun, sorry. Cajun, Cajun? dialect. Well, French, Cajun. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, Cajun is literally. No, but a it French is a, a lingua franca. It's two languages that, that met each other. It's, it's sort of mashup. like a pigeon. Yeah. 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 yeah um, but uh, it came from Acadia in Canada. People, yeah. A lot of people think that it came from down south, but yeah. it actually came from the north and came down. And it's a white. Mostly white people speak right. with the Cajuns. The Creole, that's more close to the Gullah, or I more see. heavily influenced. Oh, Creole is that. more like the Gullah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I'm geeking out. Yeah, I this. coached all that for for Mafia Three because <laughs> oh, really? it was a period piece, and I got to coach Haitian Creole Cajun and get really deep and specific. Whoa. Yeah. About it's, that. It's fascinating. For game. Yeah, for but, game. Yeah. If you've ever been to Belize, in, in Belize, they it's sort of like people from jamaica mm-hmm. it, it's a creole with english and yeah. some other things mixed up and then and this guy this guy could cross talk between them oh yeah uh, it code was switch. Like, co- he could code switch and it was pretty, yeah, it's like could you explain this to me well okay it's and then um, you like, demonstrate right and yeah. it's like okay whatever you yeah, know, yeah. It's like, all right, let's let's go on to the river that we were going to on this bus but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Cajun. The Cajun people I spoke with would switch back and forth between French and English quite a bit. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. So we have got more, but I I think for the interest of time, what do you well, think? Let's Dan? let's get in as many as we can. Right, well, uh, Debbie Smith says, uh, "What dialect is the most requested and most?" Well, these are several questions. Most mm-hmm. requested. Most requested most, usually British. British. Yeah. General British. Um, most marketable. Most marketable mm. n- neutral American. Neutral American, yeah. Uh, one that you might recommend for a female from Southern California. <laughs> I, um, neutral California. American. Dialect? Yeah. Neutral yeah. American. Learn learn the difference between the Southern California dialect and what a neutral American sound might right. be, um, which is very subtle. And uh, map your idiolect. Uh, we all have an idiolect, which is like it doesn't mean you're stupid. I was going to say my wife calls me that all the time. No, right? it's it's it you know there's a regional dialect but then there's your own sound. What right. a, a single human being That's sounds what like makes what us makes unique as voice actors. A sound different from each other. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um so there's a way using the international phonetic alphabet and various musical terms to map your own sound and figure out what your vocal posture is. Versus, you know, even a family member. And it's always good to, to really get to know your point A so that you can more easily and, and um, with more facility switch to a point B, any point B. Right. You know. I'm going to go right to this last one because yeah. it, it's really kind of interesting from Noah again. Noah Debbie, Debbie Assey. Uh What can you tell us about voice feminization for a biologically male actor? Well, I'll Ooh. tell you that it it's not what you think. It's not, oh, I'm going to pitch my voice up and sound like a woman. Right, right. Some of the best female voices, like Roz, yeah. you know, 
you can do that with a male instrument really well, whereas a woman would really have to shred her chords in mm. order to get to those places, you know, right. like that that big heavy smoker's voice. Uh, you know, like and what like for example, when I'm doing like my octogenarian couple, my male voice. Honey, honey, I've got the condoms. Are you ready for me? That's right. And then the woman, I'm moist, Harold. I'm ready for you. <laughs> she's pitch wise pitch lower. lower. Yeah, she's yeah. lower. Yeah. Fascinating, yeah. isn't it? it, it it's it could, it everything about what you said in the last thirty seconds. <laughs> It's fascinating. We have a lot of fun in my class. I clearly, <laughs> clearly. Once again, oh, we're, that. let's go over some of the the URLs for so they can they can take these classes if they are interested. Oh, uh, okay. So if you want to audition and just get into the mentoring program for the whole year with me and my fabulous all star crew of teachers, which include Steve Bloom, Jen Hale, Pat Fraley, Dave Fenoy, Phil Lamar, Debbie Derryberry. If you look on bunch of lightweights, yeah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> um, if you look on characteractingacademy.com, I have basically assembled my favorite team of fantastic teachers who also perform for a living. They also do this, and I think it's really important when you're navigating this sea of very helpful people who are willing to take all of your money to train you to be a voice actor, that you work with people who are in the business and, and do it. So characteractingacademy.com, if you click on apply now, you'll get an audition with us, and you'll get a 15-minute phone call with me where I get to hear your voices, and, and we get to determine where to place you. And if you're interested in one of these electives, that are being offered for the first time. You can scroll down and find them. You can sign up just for the elective if you've taken the master class. And if you are ready to take the master class, the dialect master class, you can go to dialectmasterclass.com, take the free training, sign up for the master class, and get one of these electives as as part of your deal Fantastic. right now. Eliza Jane, always a pleasure to hang out with mm. you. And thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Good to see you. <laughs> we'll be right back. So George and I can say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Hey, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan and Voice Over Essentials. And tonight, Voice Over Essentials announces a promo code to get a discount on their porta booths, like this one here. Now, what with material, labor, and shipping cost increases, not to mention tariffs and the straw that broke the camel's back, a big hike in storage cost, they had to raise prices on the booths by, eh, just a little bit. Just $10 on the Porta Booth Plus and $20 on the Porta Booth Pro. But our wonderful VOBS viewers can still get either of their booths for their original price for the next two weeks. You should go to, of course, voiceoveressentials.com. Easy to get there at the bottom of our page. Just click the picture of Harlan there and put either of their booths in their shopping cart and enter the promo code BOOTHS24 in the promo code field and click the Submit Promo Code button. That'll get you $10 off the plus and $20 off for the pro. Get a Porta Booth now at the original price at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks a lot, Harlan. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine. And this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application, doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really want to be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. Absolutely important. Go get a 15-day free trial at source-elements.com. 15-day free trial. You don't need an iLock little USB dongly thing to get set up with Source Connect standard right away. So go give it a try and tell them we sent you. We'll be right back right after this. And we are back. 
fascinating the stuff you learn. That was way show. more exciting than I thought. Than I anticipated. Oh, well, no, no, no. That was no, a no. fun, pleasant surprise. I, she was. I knew she would be great, and she can go on like that for a long time, as you found out. Mm-hmm. And she knows her stuff, which is the most important thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks again to Eliza Jane Schneider for that. Um, next week on this show, it'll be Tech Talk, and correct, I am correct this time, number 16. <laughs> okay. We've caught up. Yes, we, we're now, you know, it's number time 16. is going on. Okay. Uh, so make sure you're there for that next week. And then we've got some other great guests coming up as we get into the fall, even though it still feels like summer here in Southern California, and we'll probably feel that way until November. Um, but, uh, who are our donors of the week? And we appreciate their help. Got a pretty good list going. You'll probably recognize these names because a lot of them subscribe, which means we say their names a lot on this show. Yeah. Uh, Antland Productions, Uncle Christy Roy. Burns, Michelle Blenker, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks That's for You, Trey Mosley, yeah. we know Trey, Tom Pinto. Patty Gibbons and George Whittem Sr. Actually, that's my dad. Thanks, Dad. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You know, your donations do help a lot, and that's why this show is technically magnificent every week. Not a flaw. It's like doing actual live network TV, and it's all because of you guys. And so, all you have to do is go to our website at vobs.tv and click on donate now and subscribe. Please do. We appreciate that. Uh, join our join our mailing list too. Uh, those of you who are watching who are on our mailing list know who was going to be on tonight, and mm-hmm. you knew that she would be here, and that you could tune in at five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern time, and seven helps, o'clock Central. It also helps you plan because if you're going to be in town and you want to be here live in the audience, you'll know exactly when we're taping who's going to be here. So exactly. subscribe, and then then you can sign up to be here in the studio. And there's our producer. She's the reason. Why the show yeah. looks pretty good tonight. But we have this empty studio. We, we'd like you in here. Ella, come on. Get, there, on, there get in your goes. post. Okay. All right. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. You could be in our studio. All you have to do is write to us at theguys at vobs.tv mm-hmm. and uh, say, you know, I'm in the greater Los Angeles area or I'm visiting. We've had lots of people in here who are visiting and they're like, yeah. oh, I could go see VOBS tonight. Add this to your list of, you know, tourist attractions. Yeah. It's <laughs> this, the Watts Towers, the Coliseum. The Griffith the, Observatory. The Griffith Observatory, you mm-hmm. know. Topanga Canyon. Yeah, Topanga Creek Outpost Mountain Biking. Come on out Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, show us your booths. Mm-hmm. Whose booth? This is Tom Johnson's booth, It's which you can clearly see is in his closet. This is a legit closet voiceover booth. probably sounds better than some studios here in L.A. I, yeah, I, I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, it's amazing how simple you can make your studio. People mm-hmm. keep thinking, I got to spend all this money on a booth. No, but if you've got a booth and you want to show it off, we want to see your voiceover shrine and uh, send it to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV and make sure it is in landscape, not portrait. All righty. Let's see. If you need help with your home studio, come see us. You want to work with George, you go to? GeorgeTheTech.com is my whole menu of services, and it's all right there. Dan also is available online over his website. HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Send me your audio. Let me give it a listen. You know, click on the uh, specimen collection cup. And uh, for 25 bucks, I will analyze your audio. And we'll see if you're where you need to be. Uh, we need to thank, of course, our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Along with the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting and Recorded Webcasting, we've had to add a little bit to the to the foundation. It's you know <laughs> the, the title is growing. Yeah, this day is like you're a not for profit. You gotta gotta have this. We well, have to add here. podcasting on there eventually. Right. <laughs> uh, Mike Merlino for doing a fabulous job in the chat room Thanks, tonight Mike. because there were a lot of questions in there for uh, Eliza Jane, uh, his mom uh, Sue Merlino, who is our amazing director who did a great job tonight as well, and Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Come visit us, Lee, please. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, you know, we try to bring you all the good stuff. Let us know. Write to us at theguysatvobs.tv. Who would you like to see on the show? What kind of stuff do you want us to be talking about? Yeah. And we'd really appreciate that. So until next week, 
I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. And remember, if it sounds good. <laughs> it is good. All right. Have a great week, everybody.